All right, uh, Advanced Hearing Technologies, Robert Hutchcraft, how-to videos. My buddy Sean here with me, help to demonstrate. We're going to talk about feedback. You know that nasty sound so you hear sometimes in church from the guy in front of you? Right? We all hate that. That's called feedback. Feedback, by definition, is when a hearing aid's speaker or in this case where the sound leaves the device travels back into the microphone that picks it up. We've all went to a place where somebody's up on stage talking and they walk up to the microphone and all of a sudden we hear and then he backs up and the sound guy grabs the volume and he turns it down a little bit and that squealing noise goes away. That's feedback too. On any amplifier device where there's a microphone an amplifier and a speaker, when the sound leaving the speaker travels back into the microphone that picks it up, it creates a feedback loop. And once that sound loops back into that microphone, it cannot amplify its own sound. It can take outside sounds, bring it into the microphone, put it through the amplifier, raise the amplification level of that sound, and then put it out of the speaker but it cannot allow that sound coming out of that speaker to loop back into that microphone. It just can't happen because what happens is it reamplifies itself over and over in about uh, half a second and then all of a sudden you hear and then what you got to do is reach up and turn it down and it goes away. And so feedback by nature is when the sound loops back into the microphone it saturates that amplifier and that saturation uh, gives off a squealing noise that we all don't like. Uh, let's go over to the custom hearing aid. A lot of folks have seen this device as a full shell hearing aid. We're going to talk about feedback as well on this. Again, let's point out the microphone on this hearing aid. This is where sounds are captured. Those sounds then go to an amplifier and that amplifier is inside there and then it comes out the speaker. That speaker is right there. When that sound comes out of that hole and finds its way back to this hole, you're going to get feedback. And so someone would say, okay, well, how do you keep it from feeding back? Well, first off, you buy the right kind of hearing aid. If you buy a hearing aid for vanity purposes and it's real small, you're going to see that the microphone is a very, very close distance to the speaker. What, on this little bitty CIC invisible hearing aid? About a half inch, right, Sean? Yes. And so a half inch of, diff diff uh, of separation between where the sound is being collected and where the sound is coming out of this hearing aid is not a very long distance. And so it's very easy for sound to loop or feed back into that microphone. So again, rule number one, the smaller the hearing aid, the less displacement between the microphone and speaker, the easier it is for feedback to occur. So we don't like these rules. We all want invisible hearing aids that cure all powers of hearing losses, but that's just not how the laws of physics work. No one can change this. They can tell you they can change it, but the problem is with that, in about a year or so, you're going to figure out that they weren't telling you the exact truth. A lot of times I have seen in the past people come into me, they want that little bitty CIC hearing aid for the vanity purposes. Um, I point out a, a fully custom hearing aid and they, they squawk and balk because they know they're going, it's going to be looked at. And I just say, hey, listen, it's this simple. You can buy the little bitty hearing aid. I don't have a problem selling it to you as long as when you walk back in my door, you're kicking the ground and going, I wish I would have listened to you. I'll sell you a hearing aid every year if you want me to, but I will educate you to the point where you know you're going to walk in and buy another hearing aid from me shortly because you're buying one for vanity and your hearing loss exceeds what that hearing aid can do. Or it just allows uh, you to get what you need out and you're not going to be able to get any more out. And ideally, you want to buy more than what you need. Your hearing loss has changed to get to where it is now. It's not going to stop changing once you get a hearing aid. And so you need to count on these changes. Uh, again, best case scenario, you buy more power on day one than what you're going to need. The difference between these two hearing aids here is power. 
that little bitty CIC right there, you're going to get 60, 70, 80 dB power out of that. That full shell device next to it, 80, 90, maybe even 100 dB of power because it's bigger. The displacement between the microphone and speaker is considerably more. It seals more of the ear up. It's more noticeable, but it does seal up the whole ear, holding in that sound as you turn that volume up. And then we go to the custom BTE, and you can see, you can see that that hearing aid, the distance, the sheer distance between where that sound is coming out and where that sound is being collected, trace that down. What we're talking about is almost two inches of dis distance down that tube and then out that mold, which is another half inch. We're talking two and a half inches of displacement here between where the sound leaves this device and where the sound is collected at this device. That two and a half inches of displacement coupled with that custom mold right there seals that sound in and allows upwards to 120, 30, 140 decibels of amplification. This is truly the most powerful hearing aid in the world simply because we've got the custom mold, we've got the power uh, BTE set up, we've got the thick tube allowing all the frequencies to go down inside there, and um, this is why we have different size hearing aids. Uh, this has been a how-to video on feedback and how to eliminate it and what it is.